Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance and skate dress of your dreams. In today's video, we're going to tackle setbacks so that they don't tackle us and stop us from completing our sewing projects or performing or perhaps even hindering our daily lives. I'll give you three simple keys on which you can focus so that you can get back to doing the things you love and finishing your projects. In October 2015, I was trail running, running up and down a hill, jumping over rocks, having a great time, and I felt a little twinge in my right hip. Turns out, at that moment, I had strained my ligament that holds my pelvis to my sacrum. And several months went by, pain was increasing, my daily functions were decreasing, and I was receiving treatment. Unfortunately, this hip issue went undiagnosed until after several months of me going up and down stairs and ladders for certain projects. I, uh, I was teaching a dance lesson and suddenly my hip went, so if you can imagine a cartoon, it just went and slammed back into place. And the, uh, the couple that I was teaching at the time looked at me and said, are you all right? Do you need to sit down? And I was like, no and no. <laughs> because I knew at that point in time, I knew what was wrong with me. I had a severe sacroiliac sprain. And I had had a pretty good one back in 1996 as well. And after that day, on January 14th, 2015, I, oh, 2016, sorry, I went, uh, I put myself in a hip brace. And I wore that hip brace for 24-7 uh, for 95 days. I even had a second one that I took a shower in. I couldn't stand up. I was twisted like this. And I, I mean, as for all intended purposes, I thought this is the worst thing that has ever happened. It was not a life-threatening disease, but it halted everything that I was doing on a daily basis. So needless to say, that counted as a pretty good setback. So we all have these setbacks. Could be a physical injury like mine. It could be an emotional injury from a divorce or a major breakup. Could be that you lost all of your money in the stock market and you have to start over. We all have these setbacks and quite often they affect many areas of our life. If you have an injury, you can't dance or skate. If you have an emotional setback, make, you know, finishing the dress that you really wanted to finish isn't a priority because you're, you're down in the dumps. You're, you're suffering from a, a short-term case of depression or you're having to process things. Three key easy things that will help you get through this, that helped me get through that, is to look at what's your short-term gain? Quite often this is an, an emotional improvement or a skill that you have developed. Do you have more empathy for yourself or others? Are you more forgiving? Are you more resilient? So what do you have short term that happened fairly quickly that you can take with you and continue in the long run? What is a long term gain? For me, the long term gain for being injured when I literally couldn't sit for more than 10 minutes, could barely walk around my kitchen was that after two years of struggling with it, I finally got the Sew Like a Pro school open for enrollment. And I could not do anything else, so I was working 40 to 60 hours a week in 20 minute increments, because <laughs> that's all I could do. And so for me, that was a tremendous long-term gain. It had been a huge goal that I thought would never get done due to setback after setback after setback. And finally, I had a large enough setback that I was like, okay, this is the only thing I can do. Let's get it done. So what is your long-term gain? And the third thing that will help you get through this setback is what fuels your fire? What do you miss doing from this setback that you can't do during it? 
You know, what did you love doing before the setback that you can't do right now because of the setback? Maybe, you know, if you lo did lose a significant amount of money, maybe you used to love to travel and you'd go on one or two cruises a year and you can't do the cruises for a while. That's something that would fuel your fire. For me, I, m I missed running through the forest and I missed hiking and I missed being out there in the clouds and the mountains and the trees and that's emotionally what kept me going is like okay I have to to get back in shape I have to drop this weight that I'd put on I had you know I had this you know the workouts the the not ever giving up and even if I can only jog a hundred feet I didn't give up because I knew my goal I wanted to get back up on the mountain and it's not like I'm a world-class climber but it's what fuels my soul so what fuels your soul if you have enjoyed today's brief video on three key ways to overcome your setbacks, short-term gain, long-term gain, what fuels your fire, please share this story with all your dancing, skating, sewing friends, or anybody else in your life for that matter. Leave me a comment below. Tell me what has been a setback for you. How did you overcome it? If you had had a dress that you had not, that had just been locked in the closet for a year, what inspired you to finally get that dress back out of the closet? How did you overcome an injury so that you could get back to performing in competitions? Please go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email address so you never miss one of these dancing, skating, sewing blogs. Stay tuned, I'm going to share with you a short three or so minute video that I filmed recently while on top of one of my favorite mountain tops. Thanks so much, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, it's Teresa, and it is March 26th, 2007 at about... May 26th. May 26th. <laughs> Having some... I thought it was gonna be more fun to do it that way, to be like, uh, and that, gentlemen, <laughs> May 26th. <laughs> Hello, it's Teresa, and it is May 26th, 2017, about 4.30ish, and this is my view for lunch. I'm looking at, a friend and I walked up, um, he put his car through the war zone of going on the forest road so that we could get up here to enjoy this view. We're on Silver Star Mountain, and looking at Mount Hood right now. And these are our views. So this is looking, going north. We have just gorgeous clouds today, perfect weather. This is Mount Adams. And then I think off in the distance, which you may or may not be able to see, is what we think is the uh, Northern Cascade Range up near Canada. And Let's see, I can't see too well because of the glare on the screen, but I think this is Mount St. Helens. Yep, there's Mount St. Helens. And then just behind it there is Mount Rainier, which you can barely tell is there. Yeah, I'm zoomed in as far as it'll go. You can barely tell it's there because it's all clouded and a little hazy today. And so we have all of these gorgeous, you know, I didn't have a problem looking down until I started filming. <laughs> and now as I'm looking down, I'm getting a little dizzy. But we have snow caps, or little snow packs, I guess not snow caps. So we came up this trail and discovered that there are several of these little snow fields that we had to dodge, which was not so great for my hip. So we decided to scamper up and over the hill to a different trail. All right, now this is looking pretty much due west towards the, uh, the coastal range, and it's really quite clear. Got all these gorgeous rock formations, tons of wildflowers, tiny little wildflowers everywhere. All right, I think Ty is taking a photo of me videotaping. So that is looking towards the um, 
city. So that's what, Camas and Washougal, Vancouver. Okay, and there's Ty. He put his SUV through the ringer so that we could get here. But how cool is this? All these little wildflowers everywhere. Are there any of those pretty little purple ones? Some over here. Yep. All right, here's just a, I'm trying not to step on anything. Here's just a couple of, but there's like little massive clusters of these things everywhere. And we saw a very, oh, here we go. I can zoom in. Not that I know if it's actually on the screen because I can't see anything for the glare. So, yeah, if we were adventurous, which we will probably not be since it's 4.30 and I am slow moving, we could just keep on walking. Because there is a trail, there's Mount Hood again, right over here. There's another trail on that rock face that we could just keep walking to. We'll just pretend we did. All right, that's it, signing off. No complaints on our view today.